As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. My name is Father Patrick Riviere. I'm excited to be able to pray with you all and to celebrate Mass today. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, take a moment to call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy to Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, grant us your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. 
In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of our transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. the opportunity a couple of weeks ago to do the wedding of a friend of mine. Um, And I was at the rehearsal, and it was a time of the rehearsal where different people were standing up and sharing stories about um, the person, affirming them, and um, both the the bride and the groom. And at one point, one one guy stood up, and as soon as the guy stood up, the groom immediately put his head down. Um, You could tell he was just very emotional as as this man was sharing. Um, Just all the things about their life together. They had been friends through college. Um, And after he had finished his toast and sat down, the groom stood up and said um, that this was the guy who first invited him to do a Bible study in college. And if this guy had not invited him to do that, like he wouldn't have been here right now. That was the one invitation that kind of set him off on his conversion to the faith. Um, And I was struck just by the emotion and the power of that moment. And it was got me thinking of just my own faith journey. Um, As I was coming into, as I was in college, I was always, Catholic and practicing the faith, but um, it was never something very real and relational to me. And it wasn't until really my mom invited me to go to a night prayer service that was happening at at the college I was at um, that really set off like my first experience of prayer, my first real experience of a relationship with God. Um, And I was struck just by the power of that simple invitation, which seems so innocent and so like a passing comment can have such a big impact. I'm sure that man did not know that he was changing somebody's life by inviting him to a Bible study. I'm sure my mom didn't think that she was going to change perhaps the course of my whole life by telling me to come to pray with them one night. Um, but there's an incredible power and a personal invitation from someone I trust, someone I know, you may be even a total stranger, um, to invite me into something. There's a real power in that. And at that moment, um, these, the, that person, I'm sure, didn't think that they were going to do that. They didn't think that they were an apostle. Um, But in reality, in that moment, that's just what they were. Um, They were proclaiming and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, just like he was sending the 12 to do in the gospel today, um, by that simple word. 
Um, now, if we think of the word apostle, we would kind of ordinarily think like, that's not me. That's what the priests do. Um, I don't do that kind of thing. Um, we can think of like, I'm drawn to the first reading of Amos, where he said, like, I'm not a prophet. I was a, a shepherd, a dresser of sycamore trees. I was just a guy. Like, leave me to my shepherd, leave me to the sheep and the flocks and let me handle that. In his wildest dreams, didn't imagine that God would pull him from that to give him this mission of being a prophet to Israel. Um, none of the 12 have any kind of experience with, uh, with preaching and proclaiming. They were fishermen, tax collectors, businessmen, whatever their odd jobs were. Um, but none of it related to being a preacher going to towns and villages proclaiming the good news that Jesus is sending them to do today. And I think God, most of the time, chooses people like Amos to be prophets, chooses people like Peter and John and James to be apostles, to show that he uses the most unlikely of candidates, the most unlikely people, to proclaim and to work the biggest miracles. And he's done this throughout all the scriptures. Think about like Abraham and Sarah, an, an, uh, an elderly, barren couple to be the father of an and mother of an entire nation. Chose Moses, who had no leadership, no public speaking ability, nothing on a human level, to be the one to go up to Pharaoh and to lead an entire nation out of slavery to Egypt. Chose David, who was the youngest of all of Jesse's sons, the youngest, most significant, the last one you would think, to be one of the greatest kings of Israel. He chose a 14-year-old girl named Mary at a town of Nazareth that they say, what good can come out of there, such a small, insignificant place, to like bring the Savior and the Messiah into the world. It's always from these least likely of candidates that God works the biggest miracles. He chooses the smallest to reveal the greatest and most profound mysteries. And I think that's an important but very simple lesson for us is that there's not a single person in the entire world, in this entire diocese, that does not bear the same call that Jesus gives to the apostles today, that God had given to the prophet Amos in the Old Testament. Every single one of us, as unlikely and as insignificant as we may feel, as unworthy as we may feel, we bear the call to bring the presence and the message of Jesus to every person that we encounter. I'm sure it was bold for Amos to first go to these priests and start preaching against them. All he had done was be a shepherd to go and make that first proclamation, that first word to the, the priests, the people who were supposed to do that kind of thing. For Peter or Andrew, whoever, they, weren't, they, weren't, they were fishermen. To go and stand up and start proclaiming in this, in this moment in the gospel, I'm sure it was a bold and scary step for them. I think the invitation for us to consider is what they're doing um, is really inviting people to experience what they themselves have experienced. If God, if Jesus Christ truly is the center of my life, how can I let anything get in the way of that? How can I let anything prevent me from speaking about this love that I have encountered in my life and in my heart? I think that's why Jesus tells them, don't take anything with you because I don't want anything to get in the way of the reason why I'm sending you out and the, the, the person who is sending you out. I don't want you to forget anything. Don't let anything distract you from this mission and from this reliance and dependence upon me because that is the power that's gonna change lives. Not you and what you say, but your reliance and your relationship on me is what's gonna bear so much fruit. And he invites them to do that. That's why Amos, the, the message that he actually went to preach to the people in the first reading was one of uh, calling them back from idolatry. They had done just that. They had let other things that weren't God take the place of God in their life. Amos is inviting them, remember who the one is who's calling you. Remember the one who loves you and desires you and wants to do everything for you. It's the simple message and the simple invitation that he preached. And I'd be willing to bet that as we sit here today, um, that most of us know somebody um, who needs that invitation in their life. Most of us know somebody who just needs a hand to come, hey, come remember this person who loves you so much. Most of us know somebody who perhaps at some point in their life stopped coming to Mass, and we know what it has done for us, and we want to invite, we want, we desire to invite them back because we know how much it has impacted us and how much it's transformed us. It's just that simple invitation. That's all Jesus ever did. Invited people, come and see, come and follow me. 
The apostles invited people to experience this life that they were living together. Think about the Samaritan woman who said, come and see this man who told me everything that I've ever done. They all had an experience with a person and be from that place of love wanted to invite somebody else. Hey, come and experience this great good that I've experienced because I want you to share in that. God often does use the simple invitation, the most unlikely of places, to change the course of somebody's life. I'm sure God could have worked in various ways, but that simple invitation for me to come to one night of prayer set off a whole lot of other things that I believe got me to be like the priest that I am today. The example of the wedding struck me of like, if that invitation hadn't been asked, who knows what would have happened? So often God places that little prompting, that little movement of the spirit in our hearts. The invitation from Jesus to us today, what would happen if we trusted that? What would happen if we trusted in the trust that God has placed in us by putting us in these people's lives to be the conduit through which his love can finally reach them? What he's been desiring to to bring to these people, what if we're the ones that he desires to bring that message and that love to other people? Trust in that prompting of the Spirit. What might happen if we took that step? And what might happen if we didn't take the step? God desires every person to come to that, enc- to that encounter with his love. It's the only way the gospel, that is the way the gospel is spread um, in the world today. The invitation for us today is to, number one, believe that we have the call, to be aware of where that spirit, that little prompting is moving us, and to take that step in faith, trusting that the Lord is going to provide to bring all peoples to a deeper encounter with his love. Let us now stand as we together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming now in trust and confidence to our Heavenly Father, we bring to him all of our needs and intentions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may the Lord empower him with wisdom and mercy as he shepherds the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in leadership around the world, may God in his love and mercy inspire them in tending to the needs of those in their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and needy in our midst, may Christ banish every affliction and answer all their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here, may we grow in faith, love, devotion, and reverence for God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God welcome them home to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, may we be spared of loss of life and property during this hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in your great goodness, we pray that you would receive all the prayers that we place before you this day and would answer them all according to your holy will for us. We ask this and all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the laws of the Holy Church. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord.
prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you all for participating with us in Mass today. It's a, a joy to be able to celebrate with you and to um, just continue to, to be together and united as we um, just journey to the Lord. And so may God's blessings be with you um, always. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.